Yeah, we're live. 11.30. Got a special afternoon version of Let's Talk Tech. So today we're going to talk about turbos. And because, one, you know, obviously one of my favorite subjects, the thumbnail, thumbnail that I have up is a twin turbo 4.6 liter two valve modular Ford. And obviously that's <laughs> even arguably the best way to make power with a 4.6 two valve. You know, when you have a combination and the two valve is a good example, there's obviously more, you know, products and availability for it. That motor's been out for a really long time, since 91, all the way back in 91, I think. So for a long time and has been, you know, <laughs> replaced by a number of different uh, other engine families now or, or variations of that engine family all the way up to the current Coyote. So, but the thing is, you know, it never really enjoyed all of the, given how long it was produced and how many they produced. I don't think it enjoyed the aftermarket support that it could have. But one of the easy ways to make power, because they're, until TrickFlow introduced their head that Brian Tooley uh, helped design for that. So kudos to Brian for that. An impressive little two valve cylinder head. But until they did that, the only things that were available were ported aftermarket heads. And a lot of guys got into porting them, including the guys from Total Engine Airflow and various people. Obviously, as racing does, it's continued to grow and more and more people are making more and more power out of them. And we've, I think we've put to bed the fact that it, it's not a 400 horsepower motor and then it breaks. <laughs> That's not a reality. But Turbocharging obviously is a is a really good way to add power to that. So if you do ported stock heads or the trick flow heads, there are lots of cams available for them. Now there are more than a handful of different intake manifolds for them, including the Victor Jr. intake manifold, which I want to test because I've never run one of those. So I'm going to talk to the guys at Edelbrock about doing that. And I want to do, I want to, I haven't done a 462 valve test on the engine dyno for a really long time. So I want to get back and try that and do more of those and do some, got some cool stuff planned for that. So I'd like to get into that, but obviously, you know, ported heads and some sort of cam, if you want to do a different kind of intake manifold or the PI intake manifold, you can add boost to it. It works really well. And lots of guys did that. You know, we saw lots of different kinds of force inductions available for these motors. We had Kenny Bell had stuff and Vortec and Pro Charger. And, and then uh, I don't know if Torque Storm has one for a 462 valve or not. I have to take a look at those. But they would have been much later. There was the Ford Racing one that I showed pictures of all the time the with the cast manifold with the rotor pack that slid in it. And uh, it was a non-intercooled version, but it was very popular. People like that. Um, a couple of guys now have done different versions of ways to put on the later M112 from the O3 Cobra that those blowers and intercoolers on, on packaging and stuff. And so there, uh, Magnus and I think probably did stuff for them. You know, there were positive displacement blowers available for those. Whipple probably did, I'm sure, stuff for the two valve. So there were lots of different kinds of force induction, and, and that brings us to the discussion that I wanted to talk about today, and that's that we know that if you have an option to put boost on something, whether it's this 462 valve, I'm just using this really as an example, or other applications where there wasn't a lot of support, the 4.3 liter V6 kind of comes to mind as well, and we add a turbo to that, that's obviously a really good way to get power. And given the fact that we can get turbos either from the junkyard or, or any more, e even just we go on eBay or Amazon or whatever and get a cheap one and put it on, that's a really good way to add power. But does that mean that it's, and we see that with the LS too. We go to the junkyard, we get a junkyard LS, we put a cam and springs it, put a turbo on it, and it makes a you know a million horsepower. That works. And we know that that does. And we know that it works for more than just the LS. It works for this modular Ford, a 4.3 liter, any sort of motor, super other guys kind of thing where, you know, there's not a lot to choose from. That's a good way to go. But the question for today, really, and you guys let me know, but is it the only way? <laughs> Should everybody go that route? Should we be locked into one choice, even if it is the best choice, <laughs> the best choice? Even if we know we can make, you know, hey, I want to make 
choose your number, six, seven, eight hundred, nine hundred, a thousand horse. If I want to make this much power from it, we know that we can get there with a turbo or twins or whatever we want to do. Should everybody follow that route? Should we all be should we all have turbo LSs in our cars and trucks or swamp buggies or whatever you're putting together? Should we all have that? And my opinion is no, we shouldn't. I don't want to see an industry where that's the only thing that we have going on. So that's why I put the picture, the thumbnail up of this twin turbo 4.6 liter two valve. First of all, it's a little different than obviously if somebody has a choice between putting an LS in or putting a two valve forward in, <laughs> you know, you would always pick the motor that already makes a hundred horsepower more than the, than the other motor does. And so if, from a horsepower standpoint, you would, you would do that route. There's obviously much more to consider than that. And this is why, because I get asked this all the time, Hey, you're doing this and you're doing modifications to this particular engine family. Why would anybody do that? It's expensive. And why wouldn't you just swap in another motor? Well, there are a number of reasons. First of all, most people don't go whole hog and just go, I'm taking all of the stuff out of this, usually including the engine and transmission and harness and, <laughs> and lots of motor mounts and all the things that go along with that and swapping in a motor. I know that we want to LS swap the world, but the reality is that that's not a cheap way to go. It may ultimately end up being cheaper than doing lots of power on the existing motor, but not everybody has the huge money that it takes to do that and swap it all in all at one time. Especially for a young guy that has a has one of these cars, has a five liter Mustang, a four six two valve Mustang, whatever, even a V six. It's better for them to do, usually for budget, to do upgrades to the thing that they have, and that's one of the things that I like to cater to in this with this channel, is that I want to see all of the people that that continue to have the motor that they have. How do we make that better? And so obviously turbocharging is definitely one way and an easy way to get big power on anything. If you have a inline six cylinder 292 or 230 or 300 Ford or a four cylinder, whatever it is, anything that you have, um, I want to demonstrate ways and with the things that are available in the aftermarket or maybe not available in the aftermarket. And that's another thing that we have to look at. Hey, if there's nothing there, you, ha you have one of the very few choices. But I like to show people that, hey, on a 4.62 valve, they want to know what happens if I put cams in them? What happens if I put a bunch of different different kinds of cams? What, what are the gains? What are the sacrifices? What are, what are these things that I'm trying to, you know, internally figure out? Should I go with this or is the drivability going to be bad? Is Do I get enough power for whatever the cost is? And again, I, when I leave the people up to their own devices, ultimately you have to decide that. Yeah, look, Richard showed me, I, I can get 40 or 50 horsepower from these cams. Okay, they cost seven or $800. I don't tell people whether or not that's a good deal because I don't know. <laughs> you guys have to decide that internally. Should I port my heads? Well, again, that's a, that's a personal choice. You can get more power and I can show you how much power you can get and probably have because that video is probably already up. But then ultimately, if you get 50 or 60 or, or even 100 horsepower, but you have to spend $1,000 or whatever the number is, is that a worthwhile deal? I, I can't decide that. I can only give you the option. Here's what it was. Sometimes here's what it costs. Or you go look up what it costs to get that extra power. I just entice you with the power. And then you go look up, hey, that's $1,500, man. I can't, I can't afford that. Okay. Well, then you don't go that route. You go a different route where, where something that's in the affordability range. Again, that's all part of it. Um, turbos, I think, and specifically like on this 462 valve, but, but on other applications too, turbos make, <clears throat> make it seem like it's so easy to get power. Hey, look, I'll, and, and the same thing with this little inexpensive blowers and stuff. Hey, look, all I had to do is spend this amount of money on a turbo or a blower. Okay. But what else did you have to get? <laughs> you have to get an intercord. You have to get two bit tubing. Do you have to get fuel injectors? I I'm surprised how often I get asked. Hey, can I run this with stock fuel injectors? <laughs> no. <laughs> you want to add two or 300 horsepower, but you want to do it with the fuel injectors that are only designed to supply the fuel for your motor that only makes 200 horsepower? That's just not going to work out. 
I, I, and I'm surprised that that people don't people don't get that. I, I think that they think that that's just another thing that I don't want to change. I don't want to have that expense. And I understand that, but it does need more fuel. And if the injectors are, <clears throat> are going to supply more fuel, then the fuel pump also has to be able to supply more fuel. So everything that you're changing requires everything else that you're going to also have to change. So you got to look at it as a total thing. That's why LS swaps are like, oh yeah, I just go to the wrecking yard and I get a engine and transmission, a harness. That's good. It's a good start. There's going to be other things. So I, and, and even for, you know, we're talking about doing these modifications on all these different things. I think it's cool because I like to see these different things. That's why I even started and went down this path toward the other guy's route is I want to see other things. I, I, we know that you can, if you've got a Mustang or a Camaro or El Camino or Chevelle or a truck or whatever it is, and you want to make lots of power, you can do it cheaply, relatively cheaply by putting a turbo LS in it and it works and, and you can go out and have lots of fun. That's fantastic. But like I said, I don't want to see everybody in the world doing that. I want to see guys doing it on, with a Buick. I want to see guys doing it with an inline six cylinder Ford 300. I want to see guys like the, the, <laughs> this is, this is a whole nother level of crazy, which is cool. I want to see the guys do, build their own four valve V10 modular Ford. That's way out there. And it's terrible from a, a, a cost and time consumption standpoint. I'm certain but that doesn't make it any less cool. So there's a reason to do that stuff just to see if we can. And I don't mean me because I had anything to do with that. I just mean we as people, as a performance enthusiast, can we do that? Can we make that work? Can we can we put the M90 supercharger on a 4.8? And <laughs> even though it, it would make a lot more power with almost any two or $300 turbo, it would be better. But that's not why we do a lot of this stuff. And I like the fact that, and it, not just me, but but the because the industry is way bigger than that. I like seeing all of this weird stuff. I like seeing Rob's four rotor, you know, four wheel drive, crazy, you know, rotary powered beasts. I like seeing that stuff. I like when people guys when guys go out on a limb and and try strange stuff that you know maybe a lot of us can't afford or don't even have the the skill level <laughs> to, to do some of this stuff. So I like seeing that. Um, I, I like seeing uh, Nelson build these crazy thousand, 1500, 2000, 2500 horsepower motors. Cause that's just cool. That elevates the whole industry to being able to do that. Then that stuff trickles down to, Hey, if they can do that with that, why can't we employ some of that on our junkyard builds and, and run pump gas on these things at a thousand horsepower. You know, we, we learn from all of those guys. I like seeing Nick over at Nick's garage doing the old school stuff, you know, doing um, multiple carb, you know, 346 pack motors or, or the cross Ram uh, 413s or 440s or, or any of those things. I, I, you know, old school Hemis and even older school stuff, nail heads and, and those kinds of things. I, I like guys that are doing that. I, I loved seeing when I was out of Bonneville, when which what would eventually become the Speed Demon was a flat fire because they ran it with a flathead, a boosted flathead, which, as you know, is is not, is, is not the best way to go. An LS swapped motor would have made it go a lot a, a lot faster. But it's cool that they did that. It's cool that they said, "Hey, look, this is the way that we're going." And then now, okay, let's let the world throw all these hurdles at us. And we're just going to overcome each one of these obstacles. And we're going to make power, despite the fact that this thing was not designed to do this. We're going to make this happen. And I like guys doing that. I mean, the little sprint. I loved doing modifications on the sprint turbo motor and taking that out and setting land speed records with it. It's a one liter motor that made 70 horsepower at the flywheel with boost. So it's not a terribly powerful combination, but when you double it, you've doubled it. When you triple it, you've tripled it. And that's just, you know, that's kind of cool stuff. And that's, that's like the hot riding spirit. And it's not always just about, Hey, let's add boost to the least expensive thing. There is that. And we love, and we love that. And we embrace that and, and do that more often than not. But the other stuff too has to be done. 
And so I want to see guys doing more of that when, so when guys, you know, are requesting compound turbo blower stuff. Yeah. It's not probably as good as, as just doing a turbo or twin turbos, but it should be done. And that's why, that's, that's why I did the turbo blowing through the M90 blower on the 3,800 and why I did had two turbos laying around decided I'm just going to do a compound setup on the LS. It doesn't need it. And it's probably arguably not the way most people should do it, but it does work and guys have done it. And it's, and it's just cool because you got to figure out where all of the tubes go and everything. All of that stuff should be done. So we'll see more of that in, in, in 2024. So uh, we'll see what you guys got going on this afternoon. Everyone's here. Everyone's happy. Got to have a poll. Got to get scrappy. Okay, well, turbos continue to dominate the performance landscape in 2024. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Turbo, turbos have no preference. They don't care who they supply boost to. They are an equal opportunity employer. Running a $1,300 eBay setup on my BMW versus LS swap cars with five to six and swap parts and motors, turbos, easy, cheap. It is. I mean, if you can, back in the day, looking at stuff, it was like, hey, you can add 50% of power. That's a huge change. Now it's 100 or 200 or 300%. Three hundred sixty-three cubic inch small by Ford recommended leash boost controller. Does anybody have a recommendation for a leash boost controller? And does it really matter if, it, if it's port match? The motor doesn't matter if it's the heads on the intake manifold. The port matching is not a critical element. Positive displacement turbo might be difficult. Yeah. GT five hundred for the win. Super Victor. I'm running a Super Victor intake. CSU seven fifty. M94.6. Yep, agreed. Turbos are just better. <laughs> 76, 75 precision. Uh, Alan, that was the other one that I was trying to think of. That's right. Maybe two M90s on a 4.6. Almost have everything to start installing the micro squirt. Just need, <laughs> just need a new engine. Well, you got all the other things. The engines are easy to find. Salvador, you picked up an LY6. I like those from a bus. Crack the crank. Looks okay. I'm just boring it to 65 to 62 and throw 62 pistons in it. What do you think? If you're going to run it NA and you want to do that, that's might be okay. I don't like to bore them that far uh, without checking to see if they're what the cylinder thickness is. So you might want to look at that. Lenny, you want to make 900? You have you have enough turbo to do that if you have a 76, 75 precision. Turbo LS the world. Boring if everybody does the same thing. I agree. I there there needs to be variety. It is the spice of life. Tempted to gap the rings yourself. Got motor started and smoking blue smoke. The gap too big. How, how big did you make the gap? We're all over budget. <laughs> exactly. Turbo Centra, I'm, I'm sorry to hear. Uh, I'm happy to hear that it's better now, if, if assuming that's what you're talking about. Uh, L9E262, I gapped to 28. 28 should be fine on that. It shouldn't be smoking. It shouldn't be smoking from ring gap. 
not at 28. <laughs> Happy to have a 400 junkyard motor. Now I've uh, done bagged my truck and bought a supercharger. Nice. <laughs> a duper charger. <laughs> Brian, man, what's going on? Video idea, please. Ultimate daily daddy driver LS48. It's got to last forever and 700 horsepower. Um, the 700 horsepower is really, really easy on a 4.8. My question is, what 700 horsepower transmission are you going to put on it? Need some information. I have a 408 with an 88 millimeter T4 VSR turbo. I had some Victor Junior cylinder heads with 172 rockers, 7700 push rods. It's a hydraulic roller, FR220s. What problem will I have switching them from the Victor Junior? Well, I don't know if uh, the things that I would be thinking about are what is the combustion chamber change? What is the valve size change? Do you have valve reliefs? Um, more than likely, you're going to need to check for pushrod length because I don't know if the pushrod length is going to be the same between a Victor Junior head and, and whatever airflow research head you're putting on there. So you're going to need to check that. My, my plus one when a FedEx came full of boxes from me yesterday, she overheard me talking about how much I have in my motor. Yeah, you got you got to say, oh, no, it's I only got about 30 bucks. Need that tune for the ECM when turbo or super is applied. What's the tune time cost? I don't know. You have to check with your local tuner to see what they charge to tune it. I spent 20000 on the motor and the turbo kit. It's a supporting mod. It costs money. They do. It, it seems like, especially if you buy them one at a time, you're like, oh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. But when you say that 30 or 40 times and you add it, take all those receipts and put them into a box and then go and add them up. It's a lot. I've got a Gen 6 big block in my truck and I'm looking for more towing power. Would I be better off putting a turbo on the stock engine or build an NA motor? I think on the big block, I would just go up in displacement. Um, a turbo might be less money, but you got to make sure that the tune is spot on. If it's fuel injected, that's a little bit easier, I think, for towing in terms of tuning than trying to do it carbureted. Making horsepower is easy. It's everything else that's really going to work. Yeah, the, the transmission and the drive shaft and all that. It does cost. Speed cost. Scott, you got your cylinder heads? Tim, what's going on? <clears throat> Burns, it makes more sense to not remember. <laughs> Just put it out. I have parts and pieces and stuff. Also, don't forget that young people usually have kids. <clears throat> yeah, married people tend to have kids. High-tech data and testing information as a massively generous gift for the paycheck to paycheck builder. Happy to help. AZ, A to the Z. I was making 500 horsepower NA, 347 with a 200 shot, making 630. Not happy with that. Need more. Um, if you are making 500 NA, how are you making only 630 with a 200 shot? What about using motorcycle carbs to build ITB inline engine, say perhaps a VW? Yeah, you can do that. That's cool. Turbos wouldn't be the only easy if one could buy a $300 F2 blower. <laughs> That's pretty wishful thinking. Just came from Rob's last video. Yeah, he does good stuff.
especially since I know I could have chose a different platform it would have cost half as much. Yeah. Can't help but wonder if the performance industry is going by the way of the Dodo. Right now it's not. Expensive and technically challenging. I love the old tech married to EFI new tech. Flathead architecture is no match for an LS <laughs> made to look like a flathead. <clears throat> Watch A21 Bravo, Ryan make an intercore. Blazer builds. Scrolling and scrolling and A lot of car guys I know scoff at any LS swap and Coyote swaps reviewed the same. Turbos have kicked button motorsports for over half a century. Eaton M90 on a 5.7 TBI for no more than 5,000 RPM. <clears throat> yeah, a, a, a stock 5.7 TBI motor doesn't make very much power. So uh, an M90 would certainly support that. Somebody made a Buddy Ingersoll reference. Or shattering, game changing. Yeah, you're planning on doing anything with a Duratec inline four cylinder? I don't think I have. I did a lot of stuff with the um, ZTEC motor, the pre Duratec one. Brian Loans has a great YouTube on Buddy's car. Yeah, Brian's Brian's he's a good guy. I I know Brian and he's he does cool stuff. He's got the great voice. Can I donate some Japanese engines to get on the stand? What's a man got to do to see a VG30? I have Japanese engines and have run lots of Hondas on the um, B series stuff on the engine way back. I have an RB25 uh, that I'm going to run. But I the the getting the engine is the cheapest part about putting it on the dyno. That's that's actually not difficult. <laughs> Making it work with the right bell housing and adapter and and harness and all that is way more expensive. Yeah, Scott, I was gonna ask 28 and 20. That's <laughs> it's a little bit on the edge there. AR22, plink all day for a dollar. That's good. Making nitrous good again, or great again. Yeah, supercharger is an air conditioning sticker on the back of it. You got a saying from Judson. I know Judson. Yeah, I've met him. You're stupid if you got him, stupid if you don't. Yep. AFR 220s. Tell me where you can get a different power adder off the shelf that will make $700 for 100, 700 horsepower for $145. I think you probably missed the point about the earlier discussion. Um, nobody's denying that a cheap turbo can make a lot of power. We all agree with that. <laughs> that's not the point. The point is, that's not the only reason that people do stuff because it's cheap. VG30 DETT. I also have a um, an L28 turbo motor sitting in here, courtesy of the Nova winner. 
courtesy of Oliva. Have deck 80s. Is that what you ran on your GT500 blower video? Because I would like to run E85 for extra safety cushion looking for 700 horsepower. Yeah, 80s, deck 80s will support 700 horsepower on E85. Have a chopper cover cam. Yeah, that's fine. Hi from Oz, guys. Any updates on the L67 Turbo Big Bang? That's coming. I The block is still at the machine shop. In fact, I got to call him when I get off the thing today. Have you ever tuned a carburetor and went leaner on the primaries, but richer on the secondaries? Yeah, we've adjusted it both ways. We do that primarily for um, when our concern is not just... Um, Fuel distribution, like we don't always do that with carburetors, like at carburetors and 802s. I'd like to see what that combination does versus more in the front and less in the back or an even amount. What we normally look for when we don't have 802s in there is you would look at drivability based on primary. And then also when we run wide open throttle, one way that we can look at this Um to kind of give us an idea on that on carburetors is what is the fuel flow at wide open throttle primary versus secondary. We like to get that even. <laughs> so theoretically the air fuel would be even front to back. I don't know if it exactly does that, but that gives us a pretty good idea. But then you have to adjust the primary circuit for driving as well. Turbos for the win. Turbo technology, technology has come a long way. I remember when my uncle's Maxima couldn't get much more than 300 horsepower with a Garrett T3, and now a similar size turbo can support 600. Richard, have you seen the GM? The turbo GM is using on the 2.7 liter four cylinder. It's head mounted with three exhaust ports. I I have seen that's pretty common on um, OEMs now. Volkswagen does it. I, I think probably Ford does it. They're mounting the turbo right to the cylinder head to get really fast light off. Um, I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> we, we, when, we, when I was doing the stuff with Volkswagen with that type of cylinder head and that type of turbo mount, um, the head flow goes down because of the way that they have to route the exhaust side of that. And for a turbo application for Bonneville, we don't care about quick light off. Uh, that head didn't work as well and it caused problems. And we, <laughs> the way to cure that is to put a better head on it that has four exhaust ports and, and a regular turbo flange. But it is fairly common on OEMs. Do you guys think a GT45 will be topped out too quickly on a 6.2 for daily? The, the 6.2 and the daily are not a problem. It depends on how much power you want to make. If you run a GT45 at... 400 wheel horsepower or 500 wheel horsepower on a 6.2, it'll be fine. If you're trying to make more than 700, it's going to be a problem. Richard, when you're shopping for cams for the 3,800, have you checked on any other cams? Do you mean from other manufacturers? I, I would like there to be different cams that than are currently available or that I was able to find, which is why I had a custom one done. I was thinking on the way home, we used to think an honest 500 was a big deal. I know, 1,000 is the new 500. Is there any testing comparing G-Series turbos from Garrett yet? You mean comparing <clears throat> a Garrett G-Series to something else? Just watched the 4V V10 startup. Did you say you're going to get those guys into West Tech? I, I talked to them about dynoing that motor, yes. Did your ZTEC make decent power? Yeah, you can make power with any kind of decent four valve. And on the ZTEC motor, we ultimately put a ported head and cams, different intake and a turbo on it. And it made five, five plus at the tire, I think. Can't wait to see the RB. I know me too.
but he's regal. Yeah, turbocharged V6. Very cool. Sorry, G Tech builds and the 2.5 Duratec from Ford Fusion is getting swapped into a lot of things. They're holding 400 wheel with stock internals, not much in the age of LS, but in 2600 pound ZX3. Yeah, a, a turbocharged 2.5 liter would be good. It would be better, it'd be much better than a turbocharged 2 liter. <laughs> and I think the Duratec is probably a better motor than the Z Tech is. And in a Focus, it'd be fun. I loved my my ZX3 um, ZTEC Focus when it had the single, I think, I'm trying to remember, F-Max, I think, was the guys that did the turbo kit. But even at seven pounds with an intercooler and a, we just had a mass air meter and bigger injectors on it, I loved driving that car around. It was fun. Just trying to see how they're performing in the real world compared to the GTX. 286x before i make that purchase yeah the the engine dyno is not really going to tell that it's hard to do a direct back-to-back -back of two different turbos we had talked about this before about how do you compare one turbo versus the other when there are so many variables within the turbo that can be changed i went to samtech for three years he also calls people squirrels. Yeah, He's a sharp guy. James, poll question is, will turbos continue to dominate the performance landscape in 2024? Have you done an Eaton M90? I'm scrolling back here. Have you done an Eaton M90 with with car setup yet or is it is it is the question is have we run an m90 in a vehicle or should that car be the word carb should we run a carburetor on it is that what you're asking Rich, richard what's going to take to get a fiji 30 dett big bang video uh i don't know since we're starting with nothing um everything i guess What are you doing for 300,000 subscribers? I need to do a giveaway, right? I have pictures of an Eaton M90 on flatheads with a carb on my Instagram. Yeah, I, I do want to run a carb on one. I just am going to make a flange and mount a carburetor. Um, maybe I can do that on the on one of the uh, LS motors when we run it. Uh, if, IMS, if Nissan could make a thousand in the MC GTP cars in the late eighties and early nineties, imagine what we could do now. They probably were pretty good at what they did back then. <laughs> I think Richard was doing an M90 1985 Chevy Chevette for 3000. Oh, to give away a, a, a an M90 Chevette. Current stock engine sheet car record is 800 and... Current stock engine street car record is 850 wheel horsepower for G. I don't know what you mean. What do you mean by stock engine street car record? It's getting in 30 minutes late. Oh, you're on time. You're good. been trying to catch you live more than three weeks where did you find the cheap three-quarter long tubes for a gen 5 5.3 i've googled and searched uh i i have never put cheap uh long tubes on a gen 5 5.3 liter the ones that we put on there were probably not cheap they were um american racing or somebody like that somebody's headers that i ran on that the Gen 5 5.3 liter, um, unless you're talking about the Gen 5 blower on the 5.3 liter, but the Gen 5 5.3 liter was an L83, and those were expensive um, stainless uh, long tube headers, and they didn't fit on the dyno. We had to face them forward.
Richard turbos are no way they are the easy way out. Much more fab work to run a pair of twins versus a single supercharger. What if you can weld? I, I can weld, just not aluminum right now. What's the cheapest way to the cheapest way to program or tune a new turbo setup well if you don't know how to do it then you have to take it to somebody else on the cam questions on 3800 like the brand intense or other ZZP cams I have a VS RPM cam not installed yet was wondering if I should have went for an intense cam I don't you have to Daniel if you could show me the specs of those we can give you an idea and tell me what you're trying to do I want the custom grind Cam from ZZP as long as I name the Super Richie Cam. <laughs> yeah. I want something that's like a, you know, 231. I, the thing is, I don't know if that will fit though. I think the one that I have is like a 228, 230 something, if I remember right. I've got to go back and look. Um, but I'd like it, I'd like the 3800 cam to be like a good size LS cam. Um, like a, a 3800 version of the hot rod cam or the red hot cam would be good. Your chat is uh, 40, 42 miles behind. I meant to say carb. Okay. Yeah, I haven't run a carb on the M90 yet. The VS cam was the wrong choice. What, what VS cam? I'm wanting to turbo a slant six. That's okay. So I bring the compression up. What is too much compression? No, if you're going to turbo it, just leave it like it is. Just put ring gap in it. Bring it up to nine or nine and a half to one, then boost it. Your tuning window will be huge. It'll run, run better than non-boosted. <laughs> Dulcich has had problems with the uh, slant six and head gaskets. I don't know if that's a indicative of a slant six problem or if that was a tuning problem. I haven't ever turbocharged a go-kart or a mini bike. Uh, Larry, what did I do both on the 5.3? I was trying to scroll back to see what you were talking about. What would you do to a Chevette to spice it up? Maybe a windshield visor? <laughs> Snorkel, hood scoop, fender flares, chopped top, all of the above. The Chevette would be cool. But you do got to lower it, right? You got a you can do the full IMSA package on it. Uh AR22, I don't know what your I don't understand your question. I see what would happen with a 73 crank into a 62 Ford. Are those interchangeable? If if I'm running a three inch throttle body, should I run a three inch intercooler pipe? It makes life easy for connecting it. Is it possible to get LS like cam specs with that small of a diameter cam and a 3800? I don't know. Um, we had to step up to one nine rockers on the cam that I had done. I'd love an M90 Chevette. I think it would be fun to drive. So you're going to put an M90 on the... What, what's the motor in a Chevette? Is it an Iron Duke? Is it possible to turbocharge an N52 BMW engine? I thought that that's done all the time.
I wonder if they make an MLS head gasket. I know, uh, Scott, I know that Dulcich didn't use an MLS head gasket because I asked him about that. Does anybody see the modified link I put up? I don't see any links. I don't, I don't think that the chat will allow you to put a link up, will it? Turbo mini, mini bike, that would be fun. A B series and a Chevette. The problem with the B series is the reverse rotation stuff, but I guess if you swap the trans and put it in correctly, it would be not a problem. Pretty sure the Chevette had an oddball 1.6 Brazilian engine in it. Engine produced 53 to 60 horsepower. Would it be more cost effective to turbocharge an inline five Chevy Colorado? Yeah, it'd be way less money to just put a turbo on the existing motor than it would be to take it out and swap and put an LS in it. Have you ever thought about replicating the blueprint four cylinder? Yeah, I had conversations about that. I, I'm not sure what motor that is. I think it's a um industrial um generator motor um but if i can get a hold of that block i would do it i i would definitely i would definitely do that just because freiberger and i had a discussion about that and i reached out to the guys from blueprint about it too the six one Hemis have the cylinder head shut down that needs to be turned off. A six one, I don't think does. I think only the um I know the truck had MDS, <clears throat> but I don't think a six one SRT eight had that. Are they gonna do any testing on the comp cams? HB cams are the what what are those for? Are those for the Hemi? It's a generic marine engine block from memory. Uh, back during the Cuban blo blockade, every car had to stay running. There weren't new cars coming. Oh, so they were just fixing up their only the cars that they had. They have a lot of cool cars over there. I remember seeing videos on um, guys doing uh, walk arounds in Cuba and talking to the car car culture. It was pretty cool. Now it's only car guys repairing and ma maintaining. That's cool. I we're not going to have that here i don't, don't think we have to worry about a blockade like that small look chevy five liter versus 48 ls eaton m90 shootout would be fun to see so a 305 versus a 48 <clears throat> um i can tell you if they're stock the 48 makes 250, 330, 70 or 80 horsepower more in stock trim. All right, Scott, man, I'll see you later. Cadillac power. And, and thank you very much. Um, no, I don't want to do that. What are you doing here? AR-22. I did like shooting my 22. I have a Remington, the... 18 shot barrel fed deal with the slide in tube <laughs> that you twist. It has the spring loaded push rod on it. Man, we wore those things out when I was young. Screw versus roots. Do you know of any Lycomb screw blowers and stock applications? Um, there are some twin screw stuff. Mazda had one. Maybe Audi did. Lysome ones. 
not stock, just optimize. Okay. Would you buy a Lexus S300 with a 2JZ or the Lexus SE400 to turbocharge? Uh, I would like to run either one of those motors on the engine dyno. I'd like to one, run a 1UZ or a variant of that on the V8 stuff. And then a 1JZ, I guess, for a, um, from a, like an IS300 or something. I get that, but what's his setup? It would be helpful to keep the diameter a little small, but normally I agree. I, I don't think you're going to see any difference in, in either stepping up from whatever the turbo size is up to the diameter of the pipe that equals the throttle body or keeping it smaller and then stepping it up right at the throttle body. I, I doubt you'd be able to measure the difference in doing that. So then it just comes down to what tubing do you have, if whatever you have already, and you have stepper uppers or shrinker downers in terms of the couplers, just do that. It's not going to make any difference um, in terms of power. Richard, was that 4.8 liter over? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> over 300 horsepower a stock 48 when you run it on the engine dyno makes like 330 335 and a 305 makes 250 or 260 uh vs cam 90 pound springs to a 6 216 it, Daniel, is that for the 3800 that you're talking about? That's a lot smaller camshaft than I would want to run on a on an all out supercharged V6 or turbocharged V6. Lexus SC400, yeah. Peace. The comp cams, the HV cams are listed for 5.3 LS trucks and claim they're pretty good power, but I really like to see. I don't know what the HV cam is. I'd have to look at that and see. But, you know, I feel like I've tested lots, <laughs> lots of truck cams. I can kind of tell you what it's going to do. Can you do a 3.94 liter Land Rover M90 Junkyard Dyna run? Um, again, the hooking a new motor up to the engine dyno is expensive and difficult. Intense cams, 209, 204. Yeah, that's not a good that's not a good cam combination that I would want to run in anything. Not in a 3800. I mean, if you're running driving around and it's a stock one or whatever, then or a stockish one, that's probably okay. I don't like reverse pattern camshafts like that. What's needed to get higher RPM out of a 6.1 Hemi and what's the highest you've seen? I, I've never seen the highest, so I don't know what that is. But the a 6.1 Hemi with ported heads and the right camshaft and a short runner intake manifold is, is easily 8,000 RPM stuff if you want to do that. I'm getting ads in the live feeds. Yeah, they put live, they put ads in everything. For it making 50 horsepower more than a 305, it's it's more than it's more than 50 more. And I think with the uh, with cams and ported heads, if you're asking still about the 305 and the 48, with heads and cam on a 48 we're still going to be 70 or 80 more than heads and cam on a 305 heads and cam and intake on a 305 was around 370 or so 380 and you're going to be between 450 and 480 for a 48 so richard do you have a seat and guide machine i don't know the guys at um acufab have one And Slowpoke, Slowpoke, please don't ask me to do a <laughs> a valve job test. I'm not gonna take the heads off for that. The 
The 305, a 305 makes 260, at least the tune port 305 that I ran made 250 to 260 in stock trim. Chevette, Chevette engines, were you Suzu? Uh, Slowpoke, you're you're really good at cylinder heads. What do you do? Do you have a do you do porting and stuff? I tried sending the 3800 heads out to have them ported, and then I ended up never getting it back. <laughs> never got them back. <laughs> so what what heads do you port? And then were you asking me if I have a seat and guide machine because you don't have one? What kind of power would you ballpark for a Rover 3.9 given it's similar to a 3.8 Buick V6 with an M90 or a 122 with a mild cam? I don't know. What are they What are they rated at? I mean, don't they already have Rover 4 liters that have blowers on them? A lot of LS heads, okay. Richard, have you thought about using ZZP for porting or aftermarket camps? Yeah, I've looked at the things that they have available, and I ran um, uh, ZZP cams on the 3800 already. Um, we ran one of their NIC cams, I think, and I think maybe maybe another cam of theirs as well. But those are not those are not big enough for what I want to do. At least on the big bang motor. It needs more camshaft. It doesn't really need more camshaft. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should have just kept that camshaft in there and ran it and see what happened. Will stock 440 low compression Dodge engine hold up to low boost? Yes. And what kind of power are you trying to make? A cheap GT45 is a really good for a stock 440 low compression deal because a stock 440 low compression deal is going to be like a 300 horsepower motor. On a dry sump setup, you can on a dry sump setup you can have the pan much shallower because you have suction pulling the oil out. I ran, I know hot mess. I know I ran the NIC cam on the um, on the thirty eight hundred because I'm doing right now. I'm doing a comparison between the thirty eight hundred and the um, and the and the four point three liter. So this one was with a ZZP cam and it was a 230, 220, 230, 507, 112 was one of the cams that I ran. Ever heard that Kawasaki built motors for Toyota and they built the motor in the Ford SHO tours? I think you mean Yamaha. It's not Kawasaki. And Yamaha did help develop the, the four-valve Taurus motor. I have an older s and machine, but I've got access to a Surdy and have all the supporting stuff to do all the aspects of head work. Cool. Merc Cruiser 3.7. Yep, that would be cool with a big block forward head. First cam I put in a 305 pickup was too much. So you had Jones grind one that works uh, as much horsepower, but more low end and mid range. Cool, cool. The right cam makes a difference. Rover V8, 3.9 liter, no stock blowers. I know that I've seen supercharged Rover V8s. I had a shop when I built cars for the last 15 years, but I had a bike wreck and had to let it go. Uh oh, sorry to hear that. So now I'm going to do heads and engines. Cool. Richard, who can I look into for short push rods? 
Um, Trend makes push rods. In fact, they make push rods for comp and all the people basically. And then Manton has push rods. And the guys from Manly also have lots of different push rod lengths in stock. Getaway. Yeah, the 4200 is really tall from the bottom of the pan to the top of the intake manifold. 4.8 4 Rovers had the SC on the HSEs. Okay. So it wasn't a 4 liter. It was a 4.8. It was a big boy. Supercharged Rover V8 BMW engine from later, not based on the on the Buick V8. Two rules are so cheap. <laughs> Richard, one more time trying to write this down. Okay, Trend is the name of the pushrod company. Manton is a pushrod company. And the guys at Manly also have lots of pushrod links in stock. So if you tell them what they want, and, and you can go online and and um Summit probably has a bunch of different length push rods in stock ready to send out. Blazer Builds is doing a 4200 build on a Volvo. I was looking at some of Calvin's builds. He's really, his YouTube channel is really taking off, man. He's doing great. I did see one Rover engine with uh, the blower and uh, twin intercoolers on it in a wrecking yard. I, I didn't grab the blower or anything, but and and Brian Tooley Racing has a bunch of length push rods if it's for an LS. If you built a small block or LS motor and put it in a vehicle and it was crazy fast to the point where you said that's too much engine for that car. I haven't. No, I normally just do testing on the engine dyno. Yeah, Calvin's good people. Him and his dad both, they, they're cool people. Uh, BS show. If it, if it's rated at 190, I'm just taking a guess. You, you should be able to add 50% of power with a blower on it. So, you know, 270 or something. Yeah. 275. You're right on. It's for a five, seven Hemi. Again, all of those same people have push rods. Because you're just looking for a 5 16th push rod of a given length. So, whatever that length is, just do a search for that. What turbo should I use on a stock internal 97 Chevy Dually 454? Just looking for some more power. Um, a, a, a GT45 will work because that's a that's a 300 and the way that we run it on the engine dyno, that's a 350 horsepower NA motor. So you're fine with that small turbo. Back pressure gets high if you really try to max it out, but you won't be doing that. So you run seven pounds on that. It'll work good. It'll be very, very responsive. Who should I talk to or watch for nitrous advice on tuning? Well, tell me what you're trying to get done. There's a lot of good guys here. I've run lots of nitrous on the dyno. A terrible John Cosby makes a video of 200 views. <laughs> Donut, me Donut Media makes a video of 3 million views. I know, but you, you have to know the audience too. And, and John's a great guy. He's fantastic. I've made estimated crank 415 horsepower on a 3.9 rover using nitrous. Okay. You always got to do rocker sweep when you sizing push rods. Uh, I have lengths are really odd, six five nine and seven eight one eight. Well, if you're going to the fourth decimal place on push rods, 
you're <laughs> you're wasting your time just round up. And you're not going to find a 7, 8, 20 push rod either, probably, unless you have custom ones made. You're going to have to get something that's close to that. And you, because it's a because it's a hydraulic lifter, you have wiggle room there. You're going to get a 7, 8, 50 or a 7, 800 push rod. I doubt that there's going to be something in between there. I don't know that you're going to find a 7, 8, 25. Um, so you're going to you're going to be doing some rounding there and, and a seven and a six, 600 push rod is probably something that they have. After testing the BTR truck Norris cam and BTR hot rod cam, do you prefer the hot rod cam over the BTR truck Norris cam? I don't prefer universally. I don't prefer either one of those. The data that I'm providing is for you to decide whether or not you prefer the power curve that one gives you over the power curve that the other one gives you. And I would choose those two different cams for wildly different applications. I, I would wildly just different applications. I would pick the cam if I wanted to make more power, which the hot rod cam is going to do. I would pick that for something that I was doing more race oriented or something that I wanted to make more power on. I'd pick the truck more Norris cam for something that I was more concerned about low speed power on. Five three LS and S ten bracket. So, what do you want to know about the nitrous? So, on five threes, I've run anywhere from fifty shots all the way up to three hundred shots on it. You're um, mad. You're you're running twin GT forty fives. And you're not looking even for a thousand horsepower. I think you have the wrong turbos on there. First of all, I think you should put GT 45 or 35s, unless those are the turbos that you have. It's just going to be soft. And I don't do ignition timing based on boost. And are are, are you doing this on pump gas or are you doing it on E85? Uh, Enduro. So you want, you've got a five, nine there. Are, um, comp makes some small Magnum cams, um, something in the two O or two ten at 50 range on the intake side. Mad Merck highly recommended calibrated success boot camp. I don't know what that is. I'm learning nitrous, so any information would be good. What I would suggest, if you're using nitrous, go by the jetting supplied by the manufacturer. Start off with something small, like a 75 or 100 shot, and then work your way up after you've done that. Um, the more nitrous you run, you'll be much better off putting better fuel in it, so not just pump gas. You can get away with pump gas and running nitrous, but if you're going to try to go and run a 200 shot or a 250 or 300 shot, you should put good gas in if you're going to the track to do that. And then take away four degrees of timing for every hundred horsepower that you add with nitrous. Uh, Mad, it's an 81 Trans Am. I wasn't going to push the turbos hard. You're... You're going to run into problems with that combination. If you're running low boost on those two GT45s, it's going to be soft to spool. And also you're going to get those near the surge line too. Are you familiar with the, the Mercury 3.7 liter? Yeah, the one that used the big block Chevy head. Yeah, we've talked about that a few times on here. Seriously, building, uh, looking at building an electric supercharger. Well, 
uh, what's a surge line? Have you ever taken a look at a compressor map? If you're looking at the compressor map on the left-hand side, you'll see a surge line where the turbo doesn't like the combination of high boost and low flow that you're trying to do. Or there are other combinations. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of our pull at 92%. <laughs> Turbos dominate, as, as we kind of thought. And I need to get going. I have, I'm working on a video now, uh, 3.8 versus 4.3 liter. So the 3,800 versus the 4.3 liter, which also the 4.3 liter, I kind of want to put a, an M90 on because lots of guys have been asking about that. And on that note, it's time to go. I'll see you guys tonight.